where the refills are always free. Cafe Victoria with Bruce Williams on CFAX 1070. It is 25 minutes to 1 o'clock. Uh, today being Wednesday, every second <coughs> Wednesday we do something here on Cafe Victoria uh, called The Green Scene, where our friends from Creatively United for the Planet come in. And we talk about things that make our planet more green, that are environmentally sustainable, environmentally more healthy for us. And there's pretty simple stuff we can do. We're going to take that and tie it together today with our Bell Let's Talk Day, which is our national conversation on mental health. Because the connection we're going to make between gardening, horticulture, working in the dirt, and mental health is enormous. First of all, with me in studio uh, is Richard LeBlanc from Woodwind Farm. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. And we're very happy to have you here because the money that we raise with Bell Let's Talk Day is then reinvested into community organizations dealing with mental health across the country. You got some money this year. We did, and we're so grateful for not only the money, but uh, more importantly, the the relationship with with Bell Media. And uh, we're uh, using the money to enhance our relationships with and, and our coordination with the uh, mental health professionals here in this community, and uh, help people on the land that they're at Woodwind uh, put la- homelessness behind them. Right on. Okay, we're going to talk more about Woodwind Farm and what they do. Um, our friend Francis Littman, unfortunately, a bit under the weather, so we hope you feel better soon. We know you're listening. Please take care of yourself. Uh, joining us also on the program today for our green scene is Carolyn Harriet, who apparently is an amazing gardener. Is that true, Carolyn? How amazing are you? <laughs> that's a lovely introduction. Thanks very much, Bruce. Yes, I'm really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you're here. Good for you. Um, Hello, Richard. But, uh, but you know each other, don't you? We do. We do. Yes, Richard, you said that you've met each other at gardening things. So Among, yeah, yes. That's right. You're both full up with the gardening. Carolyn, what's the biggest benefit to gardening? Why do you do it? Oh, gosh, there are so many. Well, I think especially at this time of year, you know, we've just gone through winter, gray, cloudy days, not enough sunshine, and people are really feeling it. You know, a lot of people, there's a lot of stigma attached to talking about depression, and as we're, you know, linking gardening to mental health issues... Um, I think that um, for me, um, going outside, getting fresh air, getting exercise, watching the garden come back to life again after a long winter, um, these are all things that help combat um, something which is known as SAD, which is also referred to as seasonally affected disorder. Mm-hmm. And um, there are, I just, I don't know, we could spend the whole hour just talking about or half hour about the benefits of gardening, but um, I think um, really that we come from nature and we belong in nature and that those moments shared um, and in contact with nature are really important to us and perhaps we can talk chat more about that later on in the show. Yeah, we're going to do that. So Richard LeBlanc at, at Woodwind Farm, it's a farm, you got a farm, you got people that are there farming. Um, and unless you listen to Carolyn and Richard and say, well, I have no interest in you. I don't know. I don't like gardening. I let somebody else do the gardening. My, my husband does it. My wife does it, whatever. A lot of the people, in fact, I think most of the people at Woodwind Farm, Richard, before they got to your place, have never gardened. <laughs> no, they haven't. Um, and when we talk to them about possibly coming out to the farm, we typically see their eyes kind of bug out of their head a little bit. Well, let's first of all talk about who they, who they are. Yeah. Um, you know, the streets uh, can be uh, seen as the unfortunate indicator of how society is not um, as effective as we would like it to be in the way of helping um, uh, people deal with mental health issues. And when things go sideways, when people fall through the cracks, when people fall through all of the cracks, uh, they wind up on our streets. Um, so Woodwind Farm has been uh, set up as a place to help people go from homelessness to our farm as a transition uh, towards getting back into a healthy lifestyle. So that's what, what Carolyn was just talking about. These are folks that have been in a bad, very bad place. They have been there their whole lives, but a certain part of their lives just kind of, they hit rock bottom. You bet. And you take them to the farm and you hand them a shovel or a rake or a spade or whatever it might be and say, okay, go to it. Do you know, it's part of everyday life. Um, at the farm, um, we have uh, folks uh, out out in nature. Uh, they're breathing fresh air, uh, sunshine, uh, doing physical work, and uh, their hands in the dirt. And uh, you know, sometimes at the end of the day, literally from head to toe, they're full of mud. Especially, yep. at, especially at this time of year, and take a quick shower, and the, the you know to see the smiles on their faces at dinner time. Uh, when they have that feeling of of having had a strenuous day outside in the fresh air, working together as community, and literally eating the fruits of their labor. Well, there's one thing to be living on the street and be that kind of dirty, but to be out in the fields 
covered with that mud and muck, that's another kind of dirty altogether. It's completely different. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they know they're, at the end of the day they're going to get a good shower and warm, safe, uh, dry bed and uh, and a healthy their third healthy meal of the day. Uh, a completely different feel for sure. Yeah, no kidding. Carolyn Harriet, when, when one goes out to garden, there are so many... Um, I guess stimulus. I mean, there's the smell of the earth. There's the feel of it in your hand. There's the there's the the sight of the color of the flowers and the plants and mm-hmm. things like that. It's it's all kind of it's not overwhelming, but it's all a very even way of assaulting your senses, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know if I'd use the word assaulting. It's a, in a good way. Well, actually, you know, in the, Jap- the Japanese culture, they have a word. I can't speak Japanese, so I can't say it. But the translation means wood air bathing, and that actually belongs in their culture that they. They would go into the forest and take a walk in nature and actually consider themselves being refreshed on so many different levels because um, people such as Diana Beresford Kruger, I'm a real fan of hers, and I'm just reading her little book right now called The Sweetness of a Simple Life, but um, she's a botanist and medical biochemist, and I love listening to her talks on the pheromones or the sort of natural smells and senses that come from the forest floor, the leaves, the trees, the flowers, the fragrance, all these things actually that I go back to saying that this is where we have come from. We evolved, you know, from being hunter-gatherers and living really close to nature to 100 years ago, we live a relatively synthetic man-made lifestyle now. Mm. And I think what people don't realize is that when we stop children from going out or we don't take them out and they don't spend enough time in sun, um, you know, natural surroundings, they actually get this thing called nature deficit disorder. Hmm. And that's actually been linked with depression, not just in kids, but in adults and people in general that spend way too much time in a sort of synthetic lifestyle and not enough time being subjected or assaulted, as you say, (laughs) by these natural aspects, you know, that we depend on because they stimulate part of the brain that releases um, dopamine and things that make us feel good. And um, never mind about that. I mean, we could just talk about it from a a nutritional point of view that we now also realize that the skin actually secretes some um, a sort of a sebum that is responsible for absorbing vitamin D from the ultraviolet rays of the sun, the sun yeah. and that our bodies actually need to have this exposure to sunlight in order to get adequate levels of you know vitamin D without which we get um, um, problems such as a softening of bones, they used to call it rickets in children, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, in the past. But, you know, you can see what's going on now with the elderly people, like how many people actually have problems where they need to have um, replacements and uh, things done because their bones are soft. Well, osteoporosis and things like that and calcium, all of that. Yes, exactly. And all these things, I mean, if you look at health in general, you've got to look at it really from a holistic perspective. And I think what we're talking about is that... Well, Carolyn's explained this thing called nature deficit disorder, and Richard, when these folks show up at Woodwind Farm and that therapy begins for them, uh, is that is that term come up before with you? Is that a, a reality? Not that, that exact see? term. Uh, but there's a there's a book called uh, Last Child in the Woods on this, uh, that very theme, though, of our society of people stuck in front of monitors all day long and, and working and <laughs> and surrounded by concrete, and uh, we see. The, the the effects of flipping that around and, and immersing somebody in nature. Um, so the theme definitely comes up. We are speaking today with Richard LeBlanc from uh, Wood, uh, Woodwind Farm, who are recipients of some of our Bell Let's Talk funding over the last year. And Carolyn Harriet's with us, too. She's a really good gardener. And she's here <laughs> because we're doing our green scene segment on uh, Bell, uh, Bell Let's Talk Day on CFAX 1070. So you know what else, Carolyn? I'm going to talk to you about this first. There is all the stuff about the sensory stimulation. That's what I meant by the mm. overloaded. But, but the sight and the smell. And, but, but the other part of it is that you actually accomplish something. You, you go out there, exactly, yeah. you grow things. You don't kill them, you grow them. That's and you're, right. Tell That's me about the that. Well, you know, they've actually coined a term. It's called horticultural therapy. I practiced it myself in a senior's um, home for five years and, um, you know, witnessed the uh, profound effect it had on the people living in the, the home. Um, just by taking them out and, you know, getting their hands back in the earth and growing seeds with them and showing them flowers. And that's just one part. But the other part is... um 
it stirs up a lot of emotions and memories. But the other part is that I remember myself um, when I planted my first um, garden, the amazingly empowering effect that had on me. I, really? I couldn't believe that I was responsible co-creating with nature for for example, growing those flowers myself or growing that food that I had then later. And um, I become very um, empowered by that. And I've seen that happen for other people. It doesn't take much. You could just ask a person for the first time, just here, take this plant and grow it out. Let's say it's a tomato plant or something. And I'm sure Richard will attest to this, that it would have the most profound effect on someone. You wouldn't imagine um, how powerful that experience can be. Do you hear that? Like somebody's just saying, hey, look, at, I grew this. Uh, we're, we're in such a unique uh, uh, situation with Woodwind. Um, I have to tell you a brief story about one of our fellow uh, who's currently at the farm, and for some reason he's taking great pride in uh, taking awesome care of our compost. And he's turning the compost a few times a week. And he's seeing such beautiful things come out of when we spread the compost and, and beautiful plants are growing. And he looked at that and he, his, his, the essence of his comments are that, wow, this is kind of the metaphor for the streets and for my life that, you know, what looks like the negative and the ugly and the smelly and all that, beautiful things emerge from it. And uh, when I heard him talk that kind of way and others kind of echo his comments, uh, wow, the therapy was for everybody in the room, not just the participants. Yeah, no kidding. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the outcomes from the people that go through Woodwind Farm. They come from a bad place. And they go there, they've, they've come from an addiction or from a serious do. mental health challenges. And then the outcome from the farm. Yeah, uh, I mean, on our streets, the, the life expectancy is mid-40s, uh, which is 40 years younger than uh, the general population. So uh, to, to regain that, that is, is a f giant first step. But, um, you know, the, low, the lowest point that you can be in life of being homeless, uh, having lost all friend connections and family and your career and your education haven't worked out. And to come to our farm looking gaunt, looking uh, as as ill as possible, and and being only a few short months away from an early grave, um, and then to live this uh, this lifestyle on the farm of being in community, eating healthy foods, being part of the growing process, and having that meaningfulness to your day to day life. Uh, I watch people transform before my very eyes on a very regular basis. It's the most incredibly gratifying experience. And uh, people go from being angry in life and, and negative about their uh, their future uh, to talking about going, getting back to uh, uh, furthering their education, reconnecting with family members, and uh, just positive talk in general about where they're, they're headed to in life. Um, it, it's incredible. You're investing in people, and the Bell Let's Talk Fund is investing in those people through what you do. So that's why we do what we do on Bell Let's Talk Day. We're going to take a break right now. The other upside to the gardening thing is, yes, it's good for the earth, and it's good for our mental health. The other thing is you can grow stuff that you can eat, and that's healthy too, physically and mentally. We'll continue this conversation with Carolyn Harriet and with Richard LeBlanc. Coming up next on CFAX 1070. Join the CFAX Conversation on Facebook. It's Cafe Victoria with Bruce Williams on CFAX 1070. Mornings with Al Faraby. We got the conversation started today on Bell Let's Talk Day with Victoria's own Silken Lama. You don't have to struggle alone. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Whatever dark place uh, that you're at today, there, there is the other side. You can get to the other side. On the next show, should Government Street be vehicle-free? Plus, Victoria Mayor Lisa Helps and traffic and weather updated every 10 minutes. Mornings with Al Farabee. Weekdays 5 to 9 on CFAX 1070. Hey, I hear Linda's still on sick leave. She's depressed. <laughs> we could both use a vacation, too. Hey, I hear Linda's still on sick leave. She's depressed. <laughs> we could both use a vacation, too. Hey, I hear Linda's still on sick leave. She's depressed. <laughs> we could both use a vacation, too. Hey, I hear Linda's still on sick leave. She's depressed. I'm going to swing by with Mary to see how she's doing. Be kind. One of the five ways you can end stigma around mental illness. Learn more at bell.ca slash let's talk. 
Tonight, Hillside Center and Wild Vision Edutainment host the first of three ocean talks in the food court at the spectacular Ocean Wall. Topics include the Internet Connected Ocean by Networks Canada President Kate Moran, Brad Armstrong from Kelp Reef Adventures, Seal Pups of Victoria, and Brett Soberg of Eagle Wing Tours will introduce us to the newest baby resident orca, J50. It all starts at 7 p.m. in the food court with refreshments provided by Hillside Center. Visit Hillside on Facebook or go to the events link at hillsidecenter.com. This is what BC's most vulnerable children sound like. But this is what the BC government hears. They're not case files. They're children. Visit choosechildren.ca and tell the BC government to give back what it's taken from our most vulnerable children. A message brought to you by BC's Children, Youth and Family Workers, represented by the BC Government and Service Employees Union. Why should I plan my funeral? Because it's one of the most thoughtful and loving things you can do for your family. You plan for other financial obligations, a new home, retirement, or college for the kids. Pre-planning for a funeral is no different. Earth's Option Cremation and Burial Services offers a wide range of funerals with payment plans available. Earth's Option can help you create your plan to protect your loved ones from emotional distress and financial burden once you're gone. Learn more at earthsoption.com. Buzzing your hair off seems to be the fashionable thing to do. But on World Cancer Day, why not make it the right thing to do? World Cancer Day is February 4th. Let's shave our heads to support Canadians undergoing cancer treatment and to raise money for cancer research. Dare someone to shave their head or download the No Hair Selfie app for a virtual head shave. Visit NoHairSelfie.com to join the movement. Hashtag No Hair Selfie on World Cancer Day. Shave, share, donate. Together, we will conquer cancer in our lifetime. The biggest hits and the stories behind them. The Big 45 with Corey Polkinghorn. Sundays at 2 on CFAX 1070. This is Cafe Victoria, CFAX 1070. I'm Bruce Williams from CTV News, Vancouver Island. Eight minutes to one o'clock. Ian Jessup coming up after one. He's going to talk to Michael Landsberg today, a guy that you know from TSN, from sports, from all the high-level sports stuff that he's done as a broadcaster. Michael has had some challenges with his mental health, and he's going to talk about it today with Ian Jessup, because that's what we do on Bell Let's Talk Day. It's all about mental health. Today, we're making the connection between our mental health and the therapy of working in a garden or farming and how that impacts our health. Uh, Richard LeBlanc is here as well. He's from um, uh, from Woodwind Farm. And Carolyn Harriet is with us as well. Uh, I keep saying that you're like an uber gardener. You've actually farmed, mm. Carolyn. You've been a farmer too, right? much a farmer, Bruce, as a large-scale backyard grower, because, um, <laughs> you know, I wrote the book, The Zero Mile Diet, yep. and I'm really um, looking um, down the road, really, to sort of seeing what's going on in the planet in general with climate change, and I'm thinking, gosh, you know, this has got to be the worst time in the history of mankind that we've forgotten how to feed ourselves, <laughs> you know, by growing our own food, because, you know, we know that we're affected by climate change, but the plants and all the food plants are affected as well. So, you know, I'm out there sort of really encouraging people to not just, you know, for that reason, but also for the health benefits of eating healthy, fresh, nutritious food. I mean, that's all part of, you know, keeping yourself mentally well balanced is feeding the body, is you're feeding the brain at the same time. Yeah. So there are so many reasons why it makes sense for us to go back to the garden, go back to the farm and... Um, you know, to sort of realize that it was only a hundred years ago, like everybody was involved in some kind of food production a hundred years ago because they had to be. Uh, and it's just a couple of generations and we can see the health um, consequences of what happens when we actually do remove ourselves from the cycle of food production. Um, and the corporations step in and take over, and then we sort of begin questioning, like, is this actually food that they're feeding us? You know, what is this? What's yeah. in it? What's on it? The element, uh, the element of convenience comes in there, too, for some people. And, and it's, I mean, t you know, totally growing everything isn't for everybody, but a balance in there might meet. Well, not 
Even some of that. Growing everything, you don't have to grow everything, but I mean, it's amazing if you can have a, a few things, you know, some fresh herbs or a tomatoes, whatever people can make time for, or at least, you know, to support those like on the farm, woodwind farm that do grow food by going to their farmer's market. But some are already raising the specter that the rate, rising rates of obesity and physical inactivity mean that the current generation of children are going to have shorter lives than their parents. Yeah, that's the first time that that's ever really been a possibility. And it's and it comes down to taking better care of yourself and feeling better about yourself. And when you do take part in, I mean, again, we went back to saying before, I grew this. Give it to yeah. somebody say, look at me, I grew this. Richard, the guys on the farm, same thing. They, they take pride in eating what they grew. They really yeah. do. And they know they made they played some role in one form or another to, to make it happen that it's sitting on our tables. It's a, it's a bit of a uh, ongoing uh, discussion. Every time we sit down for a meal, my, I'll ask, uh, so what came from our farm? What percentage of the plate? And uh, that we've been there five and a half years now, even at this time of year, <clears throat> 80 or 90 percent of the plate often will have come from our own farm. And from your day-to-day activity, we all use our brains in certain ways, but there's parts of our brain that we don't use and we don't exercise. For these individuals that have not had this experience before with growing, working on the land, that's another part of your brain that starts to squirm when you're out there working in the field, right? It really is. There's, I couldn't agree with you, you more, Carolyn, that uh, the disconnect between uh, our, our our day-to-day reality and where our food came from, I, I often uh, will marvel at folks that walking through the garden and they have no idea what they're looking at when they're looking at a plant. And it's, yeah. Well, that's really a carrot. It's, yeah. it, it's a possibility because they haven't been there before. Yep. So, Carolyn, how easy is it to start doing this just for people that are thinking, you know what, I'm too busy, I work too much, I could use some garden therapy, I could use a little bit of that. If they've never done it before, even if they live in a condo with a balcony, how easy is it to start? Oh, you know, you don't even need a garden to grow food. It's so easy. That's why I wrote the book, The Zero Mile Diet. It's kind of like a textbook. And um, the seed saving in that book as well and recipes and just all sorts of tips and things. But, you know, it's actually very straightforward. I'm a busy person like everybody else. I'm multitasking. I hate that word. <laughs> but <laughs> I it's think real. I'm becoming allergic to multitasking. <laughs> yeah, but you know, trying to slow life down, trying to get a balance between life and play and leisure. And, um, you know, I, I think it's really um, not so onerous to do it because you come up with shortcuts. You know, I can actually plant a 20-foot row of vegetables in five minutes by a method I call hoe a row in five. I'm about to do my <laughs> primary seeding next week. Uh, we've got a great spring. It looks like an early spring again this year. So we're off and we're just spreading out all our uh, flats and the soil and all the seeds are going in and a little bit of sunlight and a bit of watering. And, you know, it doesn't take that much. In fact, I have to say that after 30 years of, um, you know, gardening in general, I'm always amazed at how incredibly creative and productive um, sprinkling a few seeds here and there can be. It just always blows me away, and you don't need much space to grow um, a salad box or a hanging basket of herbs or, you know, something, a few delicious tomatoes. And those, um, the taste of those, the flavor of those, you know, it tells you that, um, that they're good for you because not only have you nurtured them with tender, loving care, you know, that you've taken, you know exactly the energy that's gone into them, and you're getting all that back plus more when you actually consume them. It's a very um, empowering cycle that has been broken for a lot of people. So I don't say this lightly, but I do think that we could probably save the world by going back to the garden. Well, we'll pick up a copy <laughs> of the book and we'll see what happens with that. But Carolyn, thanks so much for being with us today. We sure Thank appreciate you it. Thank for having me. All righty, see ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Carolyn Harriet is the woman who wrote The Zero Mile Diet. She's part of our program today, The Green Scene, with our friends from um, Creatively United for the Planet. And uh, Richard LeBlanc from Woodwind Farm, thanks for what you do and thanks for being here. And by the way, the money you got from Bell Let's Talk was how much? $5,000. And we're, we're grateful put, for every penny. And you're going to put that to good use. Richard, sure. thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Richard LeBlanc, Woodwind Farm, all about how the therapeutic effects of gardening and being outside can help your mental health. This is Bell Let's Talk Day. Ian Jessup with a conversation of famous Canadian coming up with you after 1 o'clock today. Yes, we're going to talk to Michael Landsberg of TSN about uh, how he deals with his depression. Uh, also have a chat with uh, Jeremy Caradonna of UVic. The BC government, uh, as you may know, and our listeners I'm sure know, that is cracking down on false organic claims oh. made by some producers. So, Speaking of gardening. Yep, we'll have a chat with him. And uh, Peter Smazinski is uh, going to join us. He's a documentary filmmaker. There's a film being shown at Victoria tonight right across the street 
um, from us here. At the event center? At the event center, yeah. Yep. It's election day in Canada when voter suppression comes calling. And apparently it's sold out. Hmm. So uh, we'll have a chat with him. In the final half hour of the program, uh, Kevin Briel, the comedian from Victoria, is uh, going to talk to us as part of uh, Bell Let's Talk Day about uh, his battle with depression. Yep, remarkable guy. Just about committed suicide once. Yep, and, you did. And he will tell you that story.